Welcome, everybody, to Generation Dan. What are you doing in my swamp? <laughs> no, Luke, I am your father. And every <laughs> other quote that I can think of and say, but I can't remember <laughs> at this particular moment, the comedy podcast about generational differences. I'm Atlas yeah. Novak. I'm your millennial. Who else is here with me? I am Dean of the Genetic Marvel, and I am your resident old person who is angry about everything. And if anything when it comes on my lawn, I will tell them to get that F off my lawn. Because that's what it <laughs> It, I don't like it. And returning to the show after I don't know how many episodes it's been. It's been far too long. Welcome back, oh, Kayla. How are you? Hello. Hello. So we've got two millennials on one going on right here. This is this is unfair odds. But I yeah. think we can all agree Gen Z's pants are stupid. Yeah. That's 100% reasonable. Oh, no, 100% definitely. reasonable. Yeah. No, that's fair. Like, I mean. Like their pants. I wish I could wear them. Hey. <laughs> hey, Serge. No, but realistically, are they even pants? You're like, I mean, there's some sort of bottom half covering, not pants. I mean, mm -hmm. it's at the same time, I am definitely considering bringing back the toga uh, now that I've I've uh, lost so much weight. It's just like you know, the I feel like sounds, not, not only is that your heritage. I mean, <laughs> I'm Greek. If anything, I'd be like, I'm embracing my culture. Don't yeah. scream me. You know, it's, but it uh, seems uh, freeing. No, like like you, you can all. Well, listen, like the problem is that uh, uh, like I found out when we went to uh, so we went to uh, the UK last year and we actually went to the Harry Potter uh, uh, Wizarding World thing. It was an awesome experience, but That's also, they ex well, they explained how like wizards wore robes because they could just poop wherever and magic it <laughs> before it even hit the ground and disappear. And you're going, listen. I'm like, that's a good use of magic. And also, if you were in a magic fight, I would be like, boom, diarrhea. Like, just immediately, that would be the spell. Like, you know, like, I feel like that's the part. That's what they hide us. They hide from us uh, in Harry Well, Potter. here's the question, though. At which point is the poop disappearing? Because you do need to wipe. Is it disappear? I, is it like is the asshole like the platform nine and three quarters where it just like disappears as it passes through the barrier? I feel like that would be incorporated in the spell, right? Because, I feel like this poses yeah. more questions than yeah. I never sat there and asked myself, yeah. why do they wear robes? You know, I just mm -hmm. accepted they're wizards, why they wear robes. I never asked myself why, but now I have a million more questions. Like it's ter okay. Well, first off, the worst world building ever. No one needed to know that, you know. It's not in the books itself. And then J.K. Rowling was like, guys, hey, fun hey, fact. Everyone needs to know why no. wizards are superior. It's because they don't no. have to poop. Yep. They, just, they just nine and three quarters my butthole. And well, welcome to Plas Hole nine, nine and three quarters. <laughs> I mean, like that's a superpower. Like, Also, can't... what would you call that spell that gives people diarrhea? Ex laxico or something? Or i mean your words. that will probably work like let's be honest mm -hmm. even if you just tell somebody like i would be poop your pants today like that is that is immediately uh they're like why why would you be so mean unless you're atlas and you're like oh everybody poops their pants no they don't that is i will i will die on this hill sir you poop your pants when you're a kid and then you stop and that is how people go ah you're an adult now you don't poop your pants just is that I, is that the sign that you're an adult? That's the transition into adulthood is no longer pooping your pants. I feel like it's a strong vote. <laughs> like you're like you mature so young, you stop pooping your pants quite young. You're like that's I'm an adult. That's what I you know. There At you the go. same time, a little while ago, I was driving home, hit traffic, and I immediately was like, oh no, like to the point where I had to drive like half off my seat just out of fear. Uh, but I did get home, which I was like, I I just the shame that I would have to bear by telling Atlas that I poop my pants. I was like, I can't. I can't do it. I would I would rather cry and clench my cheeks with with just monumental effort. I've got I a it. solid practiced clench. I feel you. I think I, I feel like times. I'm like, listen, I'm still human, but I'm not a monster. You know, like I've been pretending to be human for so long at this point. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to be I'm not going to let that happen. So. Today, I, I, I haven't pooped my pants uh, in a very long time, but also I feel like that's just that's just butthole strength. At the end of the day, just butthole strength more Which, than anything. If Do anything, you know, it's a selling feature. I'm just. <laughs> Dino taught me a, a very interesting um, phenomenon, which is that if the pressure is coming from the top of the butthole, it's a fart. But if it's the bottom of the butthole, 
you're going to shit your pants. That's, that is, I'm telling you, it is the weirdest uh, uh, knowledge that I have gained from being the size of a land manatee was that if it's, yeah, if, uh, when it's go time, you're like, and you just judge, if it's in the middle, it's 50 50. You're, you're get- editing all of this out for the, <laughs> for the episode proper. <laughs> I have done that on stage, and people are like, it's good knowledge. I did it. I told guys when I was working at a Halloween Village. And uh, this German guy was like, that sounds ridiculous. I'm like, just trust me, because the next time you fart, you'll be like, oh, my God, that's real. And then somebody was helping him. He was wearing a, he was supposed to be like a, a evil doctor. So he had like blood all over and uh, smock. And his smock, he was like, Can you help me tie it in the back. And somebody's tying it. And he's like, hey, you're right. And I looked at him. I'm like, did you just fart on him? And he's like, I did. I'm sorry. But it is true. The top, the top, yeah. uh, if you feel it at the top of your butthole, and you it, just uh, fart. Good knowledge. It's, it's beneficial. It can save you. Yeah. So the question, is it exclusive to men? Because we need some research on this. We uh, need some science. I don't know. I'd have to I'll ask be- my wife, ask Victoria. Yeah. Every time that I've said it, I have seen many people in the audience go, huh. So <laughs> both men and women. But men have been like, hey, that shit's real. And I'm like, I know. But women tend not to uh, express that. Because- I imagine women aren't usually keen to listen i be like hey top of butthole pressure good theory like that i have a bit where i'm like listen i can solve uh uh sexism in one fell swoop now i can't make men not creepy i can't do that but what i can do is two specific things is number one uh women are allowed to fart without discretion like they can just fart and men are not allowed to respond to it period that is number one uh and number two is women deserve pockets those two things and i'm like that's i think we're equal at that point i think it's fair it's pretty solid right do you know yeah you're on super thin ice why no why? I mean, just like Be- being allowed to listen no, 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 women no. deserve saying, pockets sir no, no, women no. deserve pockets how dare it's really hard to say stuff like that and not have it blow up in your face from somebody down the line God willing, right, and I w- God willing, well, and I won't react if it blows up. Oh, I, I tune out the second men start talking on women's issues. I'm like, yeah, I glaze over. I'm got no, it's, it's you know, we've uh, half the country doesn't have access to abortion. So I feel like the pockets will be nice to be able to hide abortion pills in. If they were mm-hmm. deep enough to be able to get the abortions out of, that'd be great. I'm saying that would be great. Good. Pockets are important. I mean, that's, it's a crime. It's a crime. Yeah. Honestly. I feel like somebody could just open up and be like, I'm a tailor. I specialize in adding pockets to women's 100%. There we go. That hey, just don't I'm have I'm telling it, you sir. it's the future. And listen, uh, if you want to be a non-creep, notice a woman that has pockets in her uh, uh, outfit and she will go, it does have pockets. It's a very, it's a camaraderie thing. You're going, hey, everybody deserves pockets. It's a good thing. I think it's fair. Anyway, um, <laughs> <clears throat> well, the the topic proper mm. is about plagiarism, because uh, uh, Beyonce is in a little bit of trouble mm. um, with her uh, new hit Texas Hold'em having the same, apparently sounding too similar to the theme song from Franklin yeah. from the 2000s. Uh, Franklin is blowing up, so... <laughs> You know. I do vaguely remember Franklin. I had to look this up because this hadn't come into like my yeah. knowledge. So is she actually in any trouble? Like, or is it just no. people making comparison? Because I found the, the comparisons on TikTok. Mm-hmm. But is there, yeah, think, they, is there a lawsuit or anything going on with it? I don't no. think it's a lawsuit. I think it's like people are like, hey, this sounds like this. Because mm. the instrumentation is pretty much the same. And it's like <laughs> same similar tempo. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Notice, like the beats were similar, but I was like, ah, I don't know. That doesn't sound as similar as I feel like. <laughs> mm-hmm. Maybe, but also in all fairness, I so I have a musical theater degree, so I had to take a class called Aural Skills, which is like listening to music. It's being able to identify music uh, by ear. Wow. Terrible at it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> aural skills. It was my weakest skill at, in in all of my music classes. Uh, was it? Like being able to know what note was just played or being able to go, that's from that show. Oh, right. no, it's for, like being able to uh, identify 
the chord progressions like is it augmented is it diminished mm. that i was really bad at but mm. uh i listened to a couple of the comparisons and i was like i kind of hear it it sounds like like similar styles but yeah i was like didn't quite click for me especially when it comes to music sampling has been an issue since the 80s if not earlier like there was a whole thing where they're like uh people using sampling is uh, uh you know is infringing on people's art and even there's a video of prince uh like telling people off he's like you can't i don't sample i'm a musician i play mm -hmm. he plays like 22 instruments did play in 22 instruments so he's, he's like yeah i don't need your music i make my own music and he just looks in the camera he's like yeah i said it and he's like oh <laughs> it's quite aggressive sir also he's this big so you're like wow <laughs> so mean for a fairy sized man <laughs> Very little fun. That's great. So one of the, well, that's like, but that's the thing. No, I, just, like, I always love a Prince story. Like I've just, heard Prince yeah. from, like that's a good story. <laughs> <laughs> he was an incredible, like at Everything the same time. Everything ever was so funny and great. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no, I do love the idea of, of like pitching the idea to Beyonce. Where you're like, listen, Beyonce, There's I've got a new part. direction for your career. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I mean. It's the Franklin theme song. <laughs> Like, I want to be in that. I hope it happened. I want it to be true. <laughs> I want that to be true. Oh, like, you can only wonder what happened leading up to that, right? Like, just like, so listen, there's this, this, there's this turtle. His name is Franklin, okay? You can count by twos and tie his shoes, goddammit. That's and, you know, and this is where our story begins. It's just, I mean, it's a real, like, in this, in this, at this point where, like, AI is duplicating stuff and, 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 Apparently, there's a whole thing of people will take essays that have been written on whatever subject they're trying to write. They'll translate it to a language, then translate that to another language, and then that back to English, and then just go through and kind of fix the grammar. And you're like, oh, my God, just write something, you jackass. It's like, what? Like, you can have, like, at what point does hey i've been inspired by this train of because like your education will inspire you to mimic how you've been educated right that's mm -hmm. if you study a philosopher you'll think in that mindset and that you know that makes sense but yeah. at the same time you're like hey that's somebody else's speech what are you doing well hmm. as okay so kayla since the last time you've been on the show i became a teacher i'm an english teacher now amazing yeah so i didn't realize how prevalent <laughs> plagiarism is in the teaching community i guess or like in education but it's a good thing like the first time i like, like teachers like take stuff that work from each other mm -hmm. and it's oh. not even a. Oh yeah that's awesome like oh it's okay you can do it they'll literally be like hey you want this i'm like uh sure <laughs> yeah but that's but you're educating people with like you're like hey i used this last last term right it's a mm -hmm. it was good people were very receptive to it you want to use it i think that's a a reasonable sharing of thing because in the end you're not going to read their stuff word for word but you're going to use it and yeah. go okay so these types of let's okay and then you're going to talk mm -hmm. on your own voice right like yeah that, that sounds more like yeah. sharing information among your community yeah right, but like right? It, it's, it's just plagiarism it's ironic because the in school you're like don't don't do plagiarism mm -hmm. now with the ai thing like don't write your essays with ai you can't uh in college if you submit an essay to one class and then reuse it in another class it's still plagiarism oh, because okay. you're that's like ridiculous yeah stuff. i know I'm plagiarizing right? myself like what are you talking yeah. about yeah no that's literally what well, it especially because i'm i'm interested like there would be so few instances in my entire college career where i would have the opportunity Right. to like use the same paper mm -hmm. for something twice i'm like listen if i'm already if you happen to assign me the same thing i've done once before let me resubmit yeah. that paper um also and, why am i learning the same thing over again yeah right uh, like, the ai the ai thing really that one really worries me like the th that one is so so egregious to me it, so, it it irks me on such a deep deep way my favorite thing that's happened so far you know how when you put multiple questions into an ai or in the chat gpt or whatever like can you write i don't a, talk to uh, robots i yeah. don't talk to cops or robots that's fair. there you go good good i don't, I don't talk to okay. siri yeah. i'll talk to bixby proud of you yeah 
Skynet I, I has it. Like Skynet needs to try. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to just. We don't have an Skynet. Alexa or a Doodle Home. This is where I'm going to go with this the department, and we will never. This one. But... Josh has talked to J Chat GPT. My my fiance okay. has talked to J Chat yeah. GPT. Congratulations, by the way, last time. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Um. But uh. Yeah. So if you put multiple, like, can you write a thing on X, Y, and Z? It will split it up into three things and put like in bold lettering. Like, mm -hmm. here's your first thing, blah, blah, blah. Here's your second thing, blah, blah, blah. Here's your third thing. Mm. What happened to him? He's gone no, silent. Next, there you go. I was like, is it me? Okay. <laughs> no, that's what I thought. I was like, wait. I gotta what was, what was the last thing you heard? Uh, it'll give you three things. Oh. One. Yeah. And then we. Yeah. You it'll went, give you like the, you know, first thing, stuff. Yeah. Second thing, stuff. Third thing, stuff. Um. I had a uh, assignment for one of my for my students with like multi pronged questions, and one student turned his essay in where it was just literally first thing, blah blah blah, like he just copied and pasted it from Chat GPT, and I was like, dude, try harder. Yeah. Like you can, there yeah. there are ways to cheat in school. I'm not going to tell you them, but yeah. try harder. But okay, but okay, realistically, if you cheat, okay. Mm -hmm. And don't get caught. You worked smarter instead of harder. Mm -hmm. No guilt, okay? Yeah. But if you just copy someone else's shit, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you're a loser. That's on you. It's the same thing. Look, if somebody tries to steal my bits, I'm like, number one, you can't do my bits the way I do my bits. Same. That's just right. You can't. You can't even tell a story the way I tell a story. Even if you do it word for word, it's just not going to go across the same. Mm -hmm. That's just how it is, right? But like. So if you try and say, oh, well, I have a similar joke, go for it. That's your own thing. It may have the same premise. Mm -hmm. Just get to a different place. Like I had, there was a, a, a comedian who, uh, she plays a ukulele and she does, she's super, super musically talented. And I'm super jealous of that. But then she started talking about how hard it is to have parents that are like good parents and successful. And now you're like, oh, I have to top that. Oh, I'm screwed. And I'm like, oh my God, I have the same bit where I'm like, I have immigrant parents who came to this country and they're like, I came with $5 and half a luggage, not even a full luggage, only half. And I have built an empire. And you're like, thanks, I'm depressed. And you're like, that's that's my response to that. I have nothing, you know, to do. And she's like, it, it's a similar one, but it's a different avenue. Mm. But that's not, that's having similar thought patterns and also being sad that you're not as successful as your parents, which I think is a reasonable thing. That's a... Yeah. You know? True of many of us these days. A lot. Oh, yeah. Especially it's going around. Mm -hmm. It's like that thing from a few years ago. It's just going around, everybody. It's going fine. around. Trust the science. You'll be fine. That's... <laughs> yeah. Like no, I get it though. On like the kid, like not being so mad if kids cheat in school, smart wise, like smartly because smartly, on, yeah. On one side, like you're training at least to be a spy. You're at least training to be a spy. You're learning how to roll up your little answer key, slip it into your pen, take it out all nonchalant. Like, you still have to study to cheat smart. You still have yeah. to, like, write stuff down. Absolutely. Yeah. My, my you strategy never, was always... You got to practice your poker face where you're like, my computer deleted it. Yeah. Uh, right? Do you remember or, when people right. would replace those Coca-Cola uh, labels yeah. with all their cheat notes? And I'm like, mm -hmm. yo, that That's is a transferable chance. skill. That kid yeah. knows what's going on. Another one was like, you can bring in one uh, cue card of, of uh, um, like a cheat sheet of a cue card. Yeah. Uh, he didn't, he didn't, you can bring in one sheet as a uh, uh, hint page. Oh, I could write but some he, tiny on those. Yeah. Oh, well, this is the best part is he didn't say, so he said cue card, I think, but, and he intended like a, a three by five card. Yeah. So this kid brought in like a full size, uh, uh, like like you, what you use for a science fair, like that big with the entire lesson plan on you're going, okay, work yeah. smarter, not harder. You the kid mad. knows what he's doing. You're like, I, yeah. you can't, yeah. you know, don't get mad at that guy. Hate mm -hmm. a game, not the player. I'm just, yeah. you know, come on. It's, um, my, my strategy was always get to the, the class early and be like, I'm studying. And then you're just writing the answer on the table in pencil. Mm. <laughs> so, Depending, so when you look closely, you can see it, but from far away, it doesn't look like anything. If mm. they start walking by, cover it with your paper. Then when you're done, lick your hand, rub it ah. on the table, and it's gone. 
And that's why everyone gets sick at the same time in school. Just <laughs> FYI. That's exactly how that right happens. Just, I, I, gotta, I, need, I don't have an eraser. I'll just use my hand. I, 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 mm, just give it a little warm up. Well, yeah. It's a little suspicious to see someone like erasing the table. Like, that's. We no. grew up in different times, sir. People erase the table everywhere. <laughs> I was. They're like, I have nothing to do. I'm just wasting an eraser. Just mm, no. fine. <laughs> And yet that S appears everywhere we go. <laughs> I have a I have a question for y'all in, in regards to plagiarism. Have y'all seen the new I only just saw it, the recent allegations that the holdovers script was plagiarized? The holdovers. The whole really? movie with really? Paul Giamatti that's up for a bunch of Oscars. Oh yeah, my it, god, no, I haven't heard that. What's the I, I think it like me, just came really out? Good. Yeah, no, it just it just uh it just loaded onto Prime uh like a week or two ago. I, I, I think like I, the story like just came out about like because someone wow. there's another there's a WGA writer, he's the guy who wrote Paddington 2 um, and Luca Suspicious is saying has okay. has filed a claim with the WGA that their their script was plagiarized by the writer of the holdovers. Wow. That is That's like pretty whack. I need mean, so okay, but I I remember we'll see if it pans out or not, but I know, but like realistically, there were a few people who were saying recently, I think it was uh on Madam Web, where like that entire movie was written by an AI because nothing makes sense. There's oh, like yeah, that nothing... definitely sounds like nothing, something. man. Yeah, I've, which the, everything I've seen about Madam Web, I had no intention of seeing Madam Web, and then everything yeah. I see about Madam Web makes me want to see it. Which a little bit feel like it's like a reverse psyop where they're like, if we write it with AI really bad, then everyone's gonna go see it and we fuck with them. Like, I mean, like, like if it, they go see it, have you gotten me? Did it, you trick me? I feel like there's there's a, a definite thing to that. And so apparently they actually have been uh, saying that it's been pulled from some theaters because videos of the movie with people just like laughing hysterically while watching going what the hell is going like just yelling going that doesn't make no sense and just <laughs> enraged by it and i'm like i kind of want to see it more i i i mean what a brainwash me i'm down experience. like if anything i am a perfect candidate as a manchurian candidate like there's no i am definitely can be brainwashed and do like shenanigans i'm happy to <laughs> just you know that's fair i'm, I'm in it's very weird that people are using this because like I remember they were saying that uh, like I know uh, one of Victoria's friends bought 50 shades of gray and uh, uh, she's uh, my wife is Asian. It was an Asian friend and the Asian friend reads actively and was like, I got three pages in and I'm like, who wrote this thing? It's barely grammatically correct. And I'm like, ah, that's fair. So it's like, are your options to do it like poorly or have AI do it and maybe it'll be better? theoretically i don't think that's a solution right like just be better i've They're heard good. that uh like dune 2 that came out recently that's supposed to be like a wake up call cuz it's like a lot of the the stupid stuff that's happening with uh movies lately where it's like all the franchises and mm -hmm. it's because the the studio notes like keep bogging it down so it, it all everything just kind of feels and looks the same after a while and with dune 2 they were like all right you can you know do what you want to do i saw dune 2 this last week it's great yeah yeah it's i like the first one i, I should uh, check it out we it's saw it too we saw it too impressive. it was it was very like i i liked um like blade runner and the new blade runner because i'm like the cinematography is awesome the music it really draws you out and like they've really done some psyop shit to like music that makes you feel things. And you're like, I, I, I hate feelings. So I'm like, ah, it's the movie's fault. That's not mine. I don't have a heart. That's gone. Atlas has been married exactly 37 days and his Congratulations hairline... on 37 days. Atlas. How does it Thank feel? You. Uh, I mean... About the same. I have a pinched nerve right now and everything fucking hurts. on like, this oh, side of my body. Oh, no. so, yeah. welcome to marriage, sir. It's when you get both shoulders and you're like, oh, this is just my life now. It's I fine. No, I, I, um, I gotta say the funniest part about having a pinched nerve is asking your retired doctor dad for help. And he's like, okay, so do take Advil, take Advil once a day, um, get, get lots of sleep. And I'm like, I'm having trouble sleeping. And he's like, are you doing weed? And then I was like, yeah. And he's like, do more. <laughs> I love that your dad is like, are you doing the weed? Yeah. The weed will help. Do the weed. Mm -hmm. Do the weed more. 
Can your dad I mean... be my doctor? Because <laughs> he's the only doctor that may consider me healthy. <laughs> it's like, congratulations, you have done enough of the weed. I mean, okay, Serge's like, it's not funny. Serge has a pinched nerve as well in his neck. I'm like, oh, it's not. Oh, it's, it's horrible, oh, but sorry, also... I'm sorry. Hit that bong. Make yourself feel good because good GC God. culture is so out of control. You can't even make fun of a pinch nerve anymore. anymore. What does comedy come to? You used to be able to make edgy jokes about your buddy's pinch nerve in this society. Oh my this God. Communist Sweden. <laughs> Communist Sweden. No, because your pinch nerve would have been uh, seen by Ooh, universal yeah. healthcare, but right. you yeah, would not true. be in this. I will personally True. laugh in healthcare. <laughs> I don't. I don't love when whenever I like talk to somebody and they're like, "You should go to urgent care." I'm like, "Okay." Aside from the fact that I'm not really sure what it is they could do exactly, where they're just yeah. like, "Here, here's Advil," but also they'd probably right. be like, "Yeah, that'll be three thousand dollars." Right. You know? Ooh, la ti da, the yeah. urgent yeah. care. Okay, let me eat caviar and my limo driver on the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Which hey, hiring a limo driver still cheaper than an ambulance. Just <laughs> FYI, that's there. There has been a, a bunch of people who are like, uh, so I drive Uber, and this guy who was stabbed gets in my car, and I'm like, what? And he's like, I need to go to the hospital. Like, you should call an ambulance. He's like, nah, it's too expensive. Uber is the way. And you're like, mm -hmm. I mean, I it's get like it, but also, one. Jesus. That's, yeah. There's that one in like GoFundMe where people are using it to like pay off their hospital bills. Urgent care is like, This is supposed to be to like fund a vacation. Yeah. Well. Or, or like plan an event. Being the unwilling backbone to our medical system is not what we had in mind. Hey, it, Joey says urgent care is twenty dollars, uh, and that's I mean in Ohio maybe I don't in LA is like nine billion dollars. Ambulance is fifty nine hundred dollars. That seems accurate. Right. That seems I can't let this stand. Hold on. Urgent <laughs> care costs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, let me just fight with your chat while I'm here. Totally reasonable. Yeah. Joey uh deserves to be fought with. That's yeah, that's uh true. Google says 90 to 300 dollars uh for Jeez. an average visit in California. So 300 dollars like I'll honestly, just leave that for California. I wish yeah. also that that's with true. urgent care or like just medicine in general you could be like how much is this going to cost me and they're like i don't know we'll bill you at the end like that's so weird no nope, absolutely not yeah they're instead they're just like well fuck that's around how, and find out i guess hey, you know that's how bad drug dealers are i like don't worry i'll get you next time and then you're like then they come to your house with a bat like you can't there's no freebie in this that oh i'll let you know no 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 no, no. let's write it down right now you sons of mm -hmm. bitches mm -hmm. yeah i it's had i had to get um a colonoscopy in oh. my early 20s Mm. and absolutely wrecked me for years years yeah. as like financially i got fucked oh. in the ass <laughs> so, <laughs> it was the worst way it was the worst way to lose that much money that like, is yeah 100 percent. i pay oh. no medical bills he is also uh, a veteran. veteran yeah i don't i don't pay medical bills either you want to know a secret you don't have to pay bills if you're shady <laughs> <laughs> If they can't find you, you don't have to pay anything. No, <laughs> that's factual. Don't tell people where you are. That's just simple. <laughs> I'm currently broadcasting from the moon. Once no, I, I had a lot people. of medical debt that like ruined my credit for a little while, but it did eventually fall off. And I was like, sayonara. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing is, okay, listen, I would go ahead. If you get one thing done and it was ridiculous expensive, start going to everyone and just let it lump sum. You're going to get real healthy. You're going to have seven years of bad debt. Totally reasonable. And then you're also healthy for that seven years. I mean, that's a win-win in my books. I'm just, you know, it's just fair. Come on. Yeah. You got to hit while the iron's hot. Before they get you, just uh, take them apart. That's, yeah, the idea that you guys, uh, I remember they, they uh, only recently they started charging an extra $40 for an ambulance ride. They're like, if you get dropped off at Orange Care, you're not going to pay anything. But if you have to take an ambulance, it's going to be 40 bucks. And I'm like, I need an ambulance because I'm like, I... I live in a house of people that I can wear as a backpack. I need two men to come in and help me up because I'm a giant land monster. And uh, they were like, that's, that's fair. And then they saw me and they're like, you are a land monster. I'm like, ta -da! that works. Seriously. I never pay medical bills. Oh, Joey. It's just, you're also, your medical service is like, do more weed. Just like, uh, Atlas <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Shit, most of the time, why would I pay this? That's, I mean, 
Could Your you Honor, imagine? my client was joking in the chat. Your Honor, <laughs> no, he was he was doing what's called he was risen up his boys, is that's what it's it. called, Your Honor. <laughs> also, thank you, John. Land monster. I mean, yeah, I either go by land monster or uh, land manatee. Both work. That's fine. I feel like it's do you crazy. know the why does he keep on freezing? What is happening? He's gone. Oh my god, it's also a horrible picture. Like, come on, that's not even <laughs> it doesn't even look like that. Looks like him if he was like you know out of Siberia. It's like in Siberia, we don't he have health care. Dragged by the unfriended monster, just I getting mean, sucked out the back of a of a low quality zoom based horse. I mean, it looks like pictures it, on Reddit in where people Soviet are Russia to with bands you. Yeah. I can tell yeah, I can tag was all of that just silent. Yeah, pretty much the whole I, thing. You're even silent oh right God. now. Jesus. Oh God. What is going on? I mean, I maybe you've been on Marco's show. So, uh, <laughs> Kayla, I'm on a show with some other guys up in Ohio. And every time they mention something um, mm, risque that's also politically uh, charged, all of their internet starts to get wonky. And I'm like, how is this? Like, we'll be on before, before we go live. No problem whatsoever. As soon as someone says something wonky, Boom! Everybody goes weird, and I'm like, I'm here by myself. It's ridiculous. I love it. Well, God, God can only watch one thing at a time, and He's picked that one. He's like, I will put. I can stop one. Thing. That's. I mean, in all honesty, I was like, I'm like, I feel like you pissed off somebody in the NSA, and they're like, fuck that guy. I'm gonna watch <laughs> all of his shit, and he's like, I got a new fan. You're like, no, you got a new enemy, friend. That's that's one why of them watching. has an X at AT and T, just like. <laughs> Get right. That's why the AT and T cover like outage went down. They were like, oh. Oh. "Listen, that's I." They, uh, now that's a conspiracy theory I can get behind. I mean, <laughs> I feel like that's good. Every few months they keep on saying that there's going to be a solar flare. Be ready. The internet might go down for up to three months, and you're like, mm, I really feel like you notifying us says that you haven't done your job to protect the internet, Wiener. Like it's now that's why I have foraging books. That's why I got foraging books. I'm like, let's go. I'm gonna survive at least two weeks. Listen, that like the the there was a whole documentary they did up here where they're like, so uh, I'm in Ontario, but Quebec, where Montreal is, they're like, it, we have three days worth of food. If if trucks stop, we have three days, and then that's it. And you're going, oh, that's absolutely fucking terrifying. Uh, because also you guys are horrible. So I'm like, mm, yeah, I'm gonna learn how to grow stuff in my backyard. There mm -hmm. you go. Once again, laughing in healthcare. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's fine. It's... Laughing and dying. <laughs> I mean, a little bit. A little bit. That's <laughs> insurance is the biggest scam ever. Like, if I pay health insurance, I'm not paying more medical bills. <laughs> oh, I agree that insurance is the absolutely the biggest scam ever. That's that's spot on. You're you said this is uh your friend Joey. Yeah. I like yeah. you, Joey. Yeah, yeah. He's he's he goes by his show. His uh, uh, channel is Square Table Degenerates, and that Square, is the shout out to Square Table Degenerates. Yeah, it's, You're it's, spot on. I mean, like, yeah, they they also uh, uh, the abbreviation is STD, which you're like, yeah, also spot on. It's just, you know, that's the way he rolls. And I'm like, that's fine. <laughs> I know for like plagiarism and comedy is not looked kindly upon. Mm. Oh all. no! You'll you'll get decimated by people for that shit. You will you will get fucking like your heart ripped out, Temple yeah. of Doom style, if someone finds out that you stole yeah. their thing. Yeah. yeah, I always well, find I, that weird that people would do that. But well, it's interesting to me because like I think plagiarism in comedy absolutely happens. We see it, mm -hmm. but it's so funny to me whenever someone. At a, like I see it happen. The the accusations happen the most at the open mic level, mm -hmm. where like people are like, "You plagiarized? They stole my joke. That person stole my joke." And the reality is, they're just not as original as they thought they were. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. like, oh, they stole your joke that's been done six by six other comedians in the last fifteen years already. <laughs> like yeah. so often, like in the beginner levels, people will be like accusing other people of stealing their joke, and you're just like. No, you're that's just a bad joke. It's just like every <laughs> like they stole my joke about how I just lost 175 pounds. It was my ex-husband. You know, it's like, come on. <laughs> they stole my joke about how these dating apps are whack, man. All right. Like, like, yeah. Dating in LA is weird is my premise. I'm the dating in LA is weird guy. That's me. And the rest of the world just says LA is weird. And you're like, yeah, that's also the same joke. It's not, yeah. Are you kidding me? That's 
But no, also, meteors of a comedy absolutely happens, and like the the ones that I get obsessed with are like the side by side sketch comparisons with like people sketches in SNL or like people sketch other people sketches, and then like an Amy Schumer show sketch and stuff. Those are what yeah. I'm, I'm like, ooh, give me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that's, that's like the good stuff. I I there's got to be like I I definitely find that if you do something like especially at a at a mic, I'm like if you if the audience can tell where you're going you're you suck you're a hack like it's not you're not good right if comedians can tell where you're going with your joke then you're like yeah you're you're not good it's just you, mm -hmm. you're you're blah right but if even comedians can't tell where you're going that's a winner like that's something you hold on to but then people will try and see it. i'm like yeah but you just run your own race you don't think about other people if you hear so like i've actively dropped stuff where i'm like oh that guy just did that joke that i have way better than me I'm just not going to do mine anymore. If because I I'm like that if happened, I didn't do a job, that happened to me when I first moved to LA. There was a joke that I hadn't told in a while, and like it never really worked that well for me. And right. then like I came here and I saw someone else do a very, very, very similar joke. You know, it wasn't like exactly the same, but there were aspects about who they were as a person that they were able to make that joke better. And I was like, okay, so we were doing similar math, but you were able to do it better. And like I never, I just dropped that joke. I wasn't super attached to it, but mm -hmm. like. You know, we were two comics on, uh, like, I had been in Arkansas. They'd been in L.A. We did similar math. But, like, yeah, I showed up and I was like, that's a better joke. I'm tossing yeah. mine. I just didn't do it anymore. But that's that's really how you grow is being able to go, oh, that, no, no, yeah. I was wrong. I have more to learn. Because yeah. realistically, it's, you follow the same equation and then you fill in new variables right to make and that's joke, why right? it's so great to like write comedy from your own very specific perspective and that's that's what yeah. i started learning to do because that was very early on but that's what i started learning how to do is like draw from my specific specific perspectives take from my own stories because that you're not going to bump into someone that exactly has the exact same experience as you yeah. That's and like I haven't seen anyone do similar jokes to mine in years. You know, yeah. once I started really focusing on, all right, what is my voice? What is specific to me? What what do I find funny? And really digging into that as opposed to like working mm -hmm. on a very surface level because that's the thing. Those first few years, you're working on this very surface level. Yeah, you're just yeah. kind of trying to figure out what you're doing. So you end up in similar thought patterns as other people. But like if you keep with it and you're you're working and you're writing and you're good. You yeah. get to a point where it's like, no one can steal your act. No one can steal my stuff. No one, I'm not going to run into someone who's having the same thoughts about their, my very specific life as they are, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. You're not going to, you're not going to see people like doing stuff. Like I, I have a bunch of sh stuff about my name. That's not going to come up. Right. Yeah. I, I have not run into any other epileptic comedians. So like the 15 to 20 minutes I have on epilepsy, that's pretty much all me. Yep. Um, so it, it just never, yeah, same thing. We're, we're like, you focus inward. Also, that means stuff ages less terribly. Because like, yeah. if, if you're a topical comedian, that's fine. But you're, you're constantly, like your material constantly is decaying on you as mm -hmm. time goes on. But that's the thing is, and also it's easier to remember because it's yours. Like it mm -hmm. actually happened. You're like, oh, I remember this one time. I got my tongue stuck to a uh, steel post because uh, my brothers were assholes. And uh, that, that's a thing that you play prank on young people. Ta -da! Like, because my friend wanted a Red Ryder BB gun and I was dared to stick it on the pole outside the school. <laughs> but like, like there's always, if it's yours, mm -hmm. you'll never forget it. You'll learn, you'll just be making it better. Like you'll learn better tags and stuff like that just because you, you lived it. Mm -hmm. But if you're telling somebody else's story, it's gonna suck. Why? Because it's not yours. That's that's why, like, the idea that people would copy and try and represent it, like, oh, I did this. You're like, okay, but you didn't. So what are you talking about, right? Like, like, so yesterday we went and saw Amadeus, and I'm like, okay, the whole premise, I, I believe that the, the movie itself is fictitious, like the storyline, but the idea was that you have Mozart, who is unbelievably good, and the guy who could have helped him to be successful and 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 live longer and all that kind of stuff was like, fuck you. I hate this guy. Why? Because he's better than me. You're like, that's not a reason to hate somebody. That's a reason to support somebody. No, they're good. You sh and he's like, but he was a bureaucrat and he had favor in the court. So you're going, the whole idea that you have people who are like, oh, well, I have many friends in high places, so I'm in charge. You're like, yeah, but you suck shit. That's not, you shouldn't be there, you piece of crap. And oh, then, my God. You know, Wait, so that means Salieri is an open micer? <laughs> he really was. Fuck. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, that's, 
the idea. We need to rewatch Amadeus because I've I've the only version out of that I've watched recently is the Simpsons version. <laughs> Which I mean, it's probably comparable. That's that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, if anything, it's going to be hilarious. It's got the classic uh, Beans fart song. Mm. I mean, that's top tier entertainment. Mozart famously into poop jokes, so that's kind of on brand for that. Anyway. Okay, so Luther too. That was the hilarious thing where, like, people were like, "Oh, no, someone like Mozart would never talk about that." You're like, "Yes, he would." You know why? Because he was not operating on the same level. You're like, "Listen, a guy who can do this as a child is not in the same world as everyone else, right?" Yeah. It's the same idea. If like people who are exceptional mathematicians and scientists and stuff, you're like. Yeah, have you ever tried having a conversation with them? It's like plucking out your own eyeballs and then <laughs> chewing on them. It is a nightmare. But if you take horrible time go, mental oh. image, Jesus. <laughs> but it's accurate because you're just like, oh, I just don't want to be here. This is this mm. is actually horrible. But if you take the time, be like, hey, can you explain a little further? And they they actually will get frustrated at how they have to slow down to help you understand. And you're like, I'm trying, just please, just. And then you you're like, oh, I get it. And you're like. Ta da It's a communication issue. You guys are just assholes. But very weird. So, you, you ever hear the theory that when people become famous, they stop maturing? Yes. So, if Mozart got famous at like five, then his love of statological humor makes complete sense. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Like that, you can't function and be like that's the big risk of of child fame right is that you you nobody will actually be honest to you right and mm -hmm. people stop punching in the face because that's your money maker which is like kind of kind but also no people need to be punched in the face that's just the world is better that way it's just fact. mickey rourke better career after getting fucked up in the face i mean and that thing <sighs> He ain't selling that to what exactly people. happened to Mickey Rourke? I don't actually know like what caused hmm. the facial damage. He had a bunch of plastic surgeries. Like, I guess he had one that went like really south, and like, and then he's been trying to fix it ever since. And now he looks like he replaced his skin with uh fried chicken skin. I don't, I don't Robert know. Redford had the same thing. Face still, of... still acts amazing through the fried chicken skin. Wow, well, listen, he's smelling chicken skin the whole time. It's an incentive to keep going. Yeah. I think it's fair. It's uh it's delicious. Better than asshole nine and three quarters, that's for sure. <laughs> that, that might be the episode title. <laughs> it's kind of it's very tempting. I mean You're really tempted by that asshole nine and three quarters. <laughs> That's if top tier humor. If there's anything I know about you, yeah. like when people ask me about you, I'm like, well, he's real tempted by the asshole nine and three quarters. I mean, that's people a people ask intro. you about me all the time, all the time, and I answer, he is exclusively and only interested in asshole nine and three quarters. I mean, if anything, oh like God. more questions and yeah. interest. I feel like that's a uh, you intrigue people that way. That's fine. That's a favor. You should thank her. That's I'm just saying. Yeah. I always wondered why, like in music, you hmm. can have cover songs. You have cover bands even yeah. i was in a band in high school called obvious plagiarism and all we did were covers we wore other bands t-shirts and concerts that's fun yeah that's fun. it was, it was exactly. a fun time but like there's no like there's no ability to do that in the comedy world for some reason no is it because comedy is like very, based on surprise or probably what? do i think you could do something kind of like I think it's the way you play it. Like if you did something referential where you're doing who's on first, like, you know, that's a classic there, you know, there's some stuff yeah. that I feel like you can, you can work in there. If you were to like, if you're a drag queen who like does the Joan Rivers like bit, like yeah. I feel like there are ways to do it, but on the whole, yeah. Like there's really, there's no cover bands in comedy. Like yeah. there's those little niche things you could do. Now there's one, so one of my favorite bits of all time and it's so old and I like watch it. I've watched it so many times. Um, but it's, uh, it's of a woman doing, uh, she's like, she does a Carlos Mencia bit. Okay. I know her name. Hold on. It, gonna... That means it wasn't Carlos Mencia's in the first place. The only, the yeah. only re the only reason that I can't remember her name right now is because I brought it up. I legitimately watch it all the time. Um, Morgan Murphy, I think it is. But, um, she, she like, 
makes this big show out of like being like Carlos Mencia stole a bit from me. And then she does his bit so low energy. She does one of his bits really low energy. And when you do his bits low energy, you realize there's no bit there. <laughs> I mean, okay. And I, no. she like makes a YouTube video where she's like, I'm calling out Carlos Mencia for stealing a bit. And the whole bit is like, so I put my hand in my pants and I circled it and then I pulled it out and I smelled it. And it's like, it's so perfect. And it's the only, it's like the only time I've seen stand-up comedy plagiarized correctly, you know, because the bit is the fact that she's plagiarizing a plagiarist yeah. and exposing him for not being even having good written material. It's so perfect. I'm going to, I'm going to find it. I'm going to oh, find it. That's so Please do. Funny. But that's like, it that's is Morgan Murphy. It is Morgan Murphy. Okay. Uh -huh. I was right on that at least. But that's the thing is like the only way to uh, 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 respond to that, like, is like, oh, if you constantly plagiarize material, like that person should, like, in anything, they should be ousted. Like, oh, then don't hire right. that person. They're a horrible, they're a garbage. It's not even that, right? It's called Mencia Steals Yet Again. It's Morgan Murphy. <laughs> she posted it 16 years ago. Jeez. watch it it's like it's very refer like it's very referential and it's great did you know if you pretend to shake salt on your tongue it'll you'll taste salt listen i don't listen, know atlas you, uh, i feel like you should try that out definitely maybe with both yeah. hands salt and pepper <laughs> go for it yeah. uh also okay one of my pet peeves and I, I let me get your opinion because you guys probably uh, uh do more comedy than i do and go to more shows and stuff like that but if there's somebody who's like, oh, I want to do five minutes and they're let up and all they do is street jokes, like jokes where you're like, yeah, those are all over Instagram. That's not those, none of those aren't owned by anyone. They're just, you know, just regular uh, long term shit jokes. But then they're like, ha ha, I'm hilarious. And you're like, the fuck off the stage, you piece of shit. Like, just I get enraged by that. And I'm like, I feel like I might be the bad person on that. But I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> I certainly don't I certainly don't like it like I I'm very judgmental of those people it's very easy to be judgmental of those people yeah I will say so like I think it was Patton Oswalt his first mm -hmm. time went up and did like street jokes from a book yeah and then a comic came up to him and was like we don't do that yeah that's not what we do we don't do that so I think like if it's the first time that's yeah. when you as like a fellow artist may be like, you know what? Hey, friend, I see yeah, you look. Yeah. So and that's just me. That's my energy because yeah. I also I teach kids, not as like any traditional like way, but like I also teach kids, and like <laughs> so I'm like, hey, buddy, hey, friend, I don't yeah, think yeah. you did that right. I love yeah. your energy. I sure love your passion. Sure, oil, but you know, but like if you get, we had this guy back in Little Rock when I was doing comedy in Little Rock. He would literally go on stage. And like he would get snarky t-shirts. He would get snarky t-shirts at like Walmart and Goodwill and like Target and shit with little sayings on it. Yep. He would literally just hold them up and read it. And that was his whole bit. Mm. And he was the worst. He was Listen, the worst. And as... he would just do like bits off of Reddit. He, he was the worst. Oh, I hate God. him. And he did it for like two years. And it did was it like, work for him? Or was like, like, what? Did it work for him? No. <laughs> okay, good. All right. See, look, like as <laughs> as someone who the most delusional people I've ever met. Look, as someone who used to like, I have a collection of ridiculous T-shirts that I like. I will never mention them in my. I just walk on stage. Like I have one. It looks like a a, a North Face logo, but it says uh, "Hey Fuck Face" instead. And people love that. Like I have it on my uh, uh, Facebook and my Instagram because I'm like, it's a hilarious shirt. And people are just okay. like, ah, fuck face, <laughs> right? But I'm like, I don't talk about it. And I'm it's like, a I just conversation piece in like normal conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, it sets the bar. I'm like, I have one that says, ew, people. I'm like, yeah. just I don't like any of you. Let's start there, and then yeah, I'm but it make does, it does it have Tweety Bird standing above it going? No. <laughs> Just says ew people. That's it. There oh my god! I have the airbrush Tweety Bird on there. There was a guy like this is almost ten years ago now, um, yeah. at Westside Comedy Theater. His name was Mango Vajito. He would go up and do the exact same routine, word for word, yeah. every week for a year. 
Talk about plagiarizing yourself. Like it got to the point where the audience was just like saying his shit back to him. No, I've I've definitely seen that of like the the people who like they will write five minutes and they'll get laughs on those five minutes and then they're like, Oh, I'm gonna do this five minutes until I die. Yeah. 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 This is my five minutes. <laughs> will always be my five minutes. This is th- this five minutes is gonna carry me all the way to the top. This five minutes is gonna get Kimmel to blow me. Yeah. This is my five minutes. There are many like it, but this one is mine. <laughs> Without my five minutes, I am useless. I did my first five minutes for like the first six months until I got a paying gig. And then I'm like, I'm never doing that material again. It's on. And I just, and since then, I'm like, okay. And people are like, hey, now you got paid for it. Technically, you're officially a comedian and stop doing that joke. I'm like, yeah, no, no, no. I just need to, I need to make sure I was funny enough to do, get to this far. And now I have to be creative on grand scale. I had a guy that I dated that I was dating when I first started doing comedy. And he actually, like, after we broke up, we only dated for like the first couple of months I was doing comedy. Mm -hmm. Uh, He was also doing comedy. And after we broke up, someone sent me, it went around the scene and he kind of stopped doing comedy after we broke up. But like, Someone sent around scenes. Someone found it. He'd actually plagiarized his joke word for word, beat for beat from a New York comic. And it was one of those things. It wasn't like the same. It wasn't like the same thought process or anything, but like beat for beat, word for word. The pauses were the same. Every phrasing was the same. He'd full on pull this like four and a half minute bit off of this dude, this uh, comic from New York's YouTube. Yeah. Mm. But then it got crazier because I was like so curious about this. So I was trying to find this comedian. I was curious about this New York comedian. I couldn't find anything other than like a couple YouTube videos of him. I was like, is he still working? Because the video is a few years old. So I started digging. Turns out, okay, so the joke, the joke is about um, the uh, when Superman's coming in, that first guy was like, look, it's a bird. Look, it's a plane. Look, it's Superman. The joke is like, well, the first guy who's calling out to everyone that there's a bird. What a weirdo. And then the second guy is like, oh, who's this guy calling out that they see a plane? And like his whole rendition of that joke, exactly that New York comedians set like set word for word. But what I found was an article about titled the most plagiarized joke in comedy or something like that. Oh shit! For the hackest joke in comedy, something oh like my that, God. and it talks yeah. about how many people have done different renditions of that joke. How it's like the least imaginative joke. It's like one of the most done jokes. You see people do this premise, this specific premise about who's that first guy who said, "Look, a bird." That you see people do this premise all the time, and I was like, "This dude stole a famously hack joke," oh but that he would also bite little pieces off of his mustache and then spit it out. Yeah. Okay. So I've done that, but I don't like yeah, not on a regular yeah, basis. It definitely Unless, sucks when it starts. But would the you biting the mustache, the biting the mustache, not the plagiarizing. I don't do well, that. The, but here's the question: Would you bite a piece off off of your mustache? Would you bite a piece off and then spit it onto the table that you were having your date uh, dinner on? No, yeah. no. Then uh. you're doing fine. I feel like the guy, the 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 plagiarist in that scenario, he's like, I would totally get away with this. In 1889. He thought he would. Like, he thought he would. It's always like, it's those rare occasions where you find it like exactly on a YouTube video. Like when I was in, yeah. in college in my dance classes, in my choreography class, someone found another student's like final choreography pod- project, the exact same choreography, the whole thing mm-hmm. on YouTube. And it was like, they just happened to look at the same YouTube video that had 300 views or something. Like people think if they go deep enough into YouTube where there's a very few views, they won't yeah. get caught. Cause like, who else is going to see it? But or no, that's, my, that's, right here, you know? that's I got my in channel, trouble <laughs> once for uh, plagiarism in college in a creative writing class, because I had a, my roommate at the time was really into team fortress Two. So he always had like Team yeah. Fortress 2 stuff going on in the background. And okay. uh, you were supposed to write uh, li- like a story about a character's job. And I accidentally cribbed like 80% of the Meet the Sniper video. Be- were you doing cause... like text to spe- speech to text or something? No, it was just like the kind of thing where I was like, okay, there, there's a guy, maybe he's in the sniper nest, maybe he's lonely. And maybe he's like really into being oh, professional. I see. And just like the thing where it was over in the next room and it just kind of 
souped into my brain. Yeah, into the brain. But like, it was definitely like I could definitely see the correlation. That's so like, I, I got yeah. a zero on that assignment, and I deserved it. That's an homage. <laughs> yes, so but like, and it's an homage to Quentin so. Tarantino. Damn it! So. Sure. Professionals okay. have but standards. Yeah, that's that's the other thing is whenever somebody says, "Oh, this is inspired," be like, "Oh, that's who they stole it from." Okay, that's yeah. good to know. Well, I mean, like, you know, the, the reason I mentioned Tarantino is because he's he's talked about how he's like you steal like it's like steal well or steal artfully or yeah. something. He's like because yeah. he uses a lot of inspiration and takes a lot of inspiration from other films, and you'll see shots that are like remakes but it's like it's that interesting line in art where it's like you know at a certain point it becomes homage it becomes a reference you know yeah. as opposed to mm -hmm. um like, I, it's like like i feel like if it's more than like what half of the same like if it's if it's like oh that's similar mm -hmm. like but similar you're like oh there's there's elements that you've you know changed to make it your own mm -hmm. fine but if it's shot for shot you're like hey Fuckhead, that's yeah, somebody no, else's it, thing. Like, what do you? I don't. You know. It was yeah. one of those things where she's like, "I'm gonna give you a zero, Mike. I deserve it." But also <laughs> the shot for shot it. remake that I will defend is the RoboCop shot for shot remake using uh, partially Muppets. <laughs> okay, but that's every movie that's should something. have a Muppet version. Okay, <laughs> every movie. Okay, that's how. That's those are the remakes. Listen, I don't need a new anything no i need that movie but now with muppets yeah. that's how you i don't do it, need a right? live action anything i need muppet no. everything yeah 100%. muppet game of thrones muppet oh. saltburn let's go hey, like, oh, I want muppet face off oh. pirates of the caribbean let's go with muppets saying. they Dune? made that it's called treasure island i'm I know, I which apparently the whole I thing is that. And guess what's inside it? <laughs> it's 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 michael keaton and uh 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 what? Tim to why can I think of this name? Uh Tim Curry? Tim Curry? Yeah. It's and there somebody explained to me was like, oh, it's because they act like everyone is human, whereas they're being treated like a Muppet. And I'm like, that's genius. That is exactly what I need in new entertainment. Not uh, this. Oh, yeah. we're just gonna remake it with new er new characters. You're like, no, it is garbage still. Change I it to Muppets, it everyone. I think it'd be cool if they did Game of Thrones in animation, but that's me. Um, I feel like listen, it'd be a better use of dragons. But that, oh, listen, there's not even <laughs> that. I still, to this day, have not seen the the, the series finale episode because I was like, everyone knows this sucks now, okay? And they're like, well, we got to finish it. I'm like, no, you don't. You know why? Because it sucks, okay? It's that simple. It's absolutely, I just love, I love, that so many people named their children after characters in Game of Thrones, not knowing how it was going to end. You're like, yeah, that that, that is a gamble, and shame yeah. on you. <laughs> I, I, I do, I've got I, kiddos that have Game of Thrones names in my closet. That is, yeah. I, I, there's I worked out well though. There's work. I don't have any Khaleesi's. I don't have any Daenerys. Okay, hey, hey, hey. I do good. that bit on stage where I talk about if you're going to name a child after a mythological. Uh, universe make sure it's done mm. like atlas came from greek mythology that's thousands of years old yeah season two khaleesi you didn't know how is that that was going to shake out did you yeah. that's why yeah. you gotta that's why biblical names are great we know how that short story shakes out not great but nope. it's got an ending yeah. yeah yeah there were there were some some you know okay people not a lot but some that's fine you can just uh, go for that but not yeah choose wisely people and read the whole story some people end up banging their family members you don't want to name your kid that that's that's you're setting them up for failure it's not i feel bad for kids who are named cersei after like the <laughs> goddess oh god i mean that's gonna happen it's either that or turning everybody into pigs there's not really much of a you gotta go by cc yeah, yeah definitely you gotta go by cc at that point yeah, which I, I think they also did in the Lightning Thief. Like they they had her be yeah. called Cece, and it's like oh, it's Cersei. She's turning us into pigs, and then yeah, That's um, it works. Listen, I just I like, gotta, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Yeah, I gotta say that like um, so the book that my students just finished was the Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wow, which is a book that has like a lot of English to Spanish code switching and a lot of slang. And a lot of stuff and it's like it's a really dense book for right. what it is 
And at the end of the midterm, the in-class essay, they were like, Mr. We didn't read the book. I'm like, you don't have to tell me that. You can just say you read the book. If your essay is good, I don't care. You know? Why do people rat themselves? Exactly. I have a question. What, yeah. is co what is code switching? What does this code mean? Code switching is like switching between a certain way you behave in front of some people versus others. So like you're like business Dino versus at home Dino. Oh, two faced. Um, gotcha. Kind of. Well, I think <laughs> like when I'm when I'm at work and I have customer service voice. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Code switching. Code switching. Or yeah, also that's... like when I talk to my family back at home, my accent, my southern accent gets thicker. 100 yeah. percent But that's that's you uh uh like in one scenario, I'm paid to be nice to you. That's all. That's that's what it is. Yeah, that's called a job. It's not me being two faced, right? It's, but, no, yeah, uh, it's 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 the ability code switching is like switching between like just villain still genuine and... but like different affects that you have that are genuine. Yeah. It would make me confused. That's fine. I, I mean, like I, I also, you know, person. I like I teach. I teach in a different tone than I'm talking to y'all in. You know, exactly. I'm, yeah, your teacher teach voice. Yeah. Here, and like, how are you doing, my friend? Are we having a great day? It's so good to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, teach little, I, I teach little kids. Little kids. I'm <laughs> thankfully not an educator because I would walk, look at everybody, and go, "Wow, what's up, fuck faces?" And just start that's, from there. That's roughly what my teacher voice is. Just like, all right, let's get going. Like. <laughs> just, Kind of annoyed and exhausted, like the Costanza way of teaching. Yeah. I'm a firm believer that I'm paid to do a job. I'm not paid to smile while I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Those are not, I'll smile on my own time of my own accord, not because you give me money. That, that's I, I'm very lucky in the scenario that I teach in, though, because I teach acting classes at like an after school program. So I have a mm -hmm. lot of control. So I'm um, able to be very, you know, I'm yeah. I'm not super worn out. I'm not get I'm not in the, I'm not in the the public school system or even the private school system. I'm got a lot of control over my mm -hmm. own class. It's very I nice. feel like I get, I get to teach the arts, so I get the I get the ability to be very gentle with my students. Mm -hmm. I feel I like you might in my electives where you can sort of uh like the, you, there's more freedom in curriculum. And I, think I teach nothing but electives, essentially. You there know what you I mean? Go. Yeah. Because I teach musical theater, I teach acting, I teach scene study and voice uh, acting okay. and stuff. Like, it's, Kayla, I, I have I, regular I, students in classes, but it's a very non traditional setting. I feel like you have a missed opportunity where you'd be like, my teaching method is inspired by the 50s. And then you get to hit all your students with a yardstick. I'm just. You no, know, like, it's really hard to hit kids over Zoom, but it's also oh. hard for them to get me sick. I used to point. teach. I used to teach in person, and now we've swapped to being all on Zoom. And let me tell you, I think my passion may be teaching, uh, <laughs> acting from from my living room. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I mean, so that's nice. no. Commute. I mean, that, oh, listen, the idea that uh, what's the worst commute you guys have ever had? Mine was like an hour, eat both ways, like just nonstop traffic. It was an hour, and I'm like, yeah, I will never do that again unless it's a lot more money. It's absolutely not. It's insane. My current yeah. commute is that i think it's about an hour uh yeah i've i've had commutes that were were about an, well actually no i think my worst commute um because i've had commutes where it was about an hour um mm -hmm. maybe even a little over depending on the traffic mm -hmm. but my worst commute the first three weeks of um college when i was 18 my first three weeks of freshman year i was still doing a play back in uh dfw in texas in the dallas fort worth i was like d still doing a play out there on the weekends so mm -hmm. i would drive five hours oh from my, my school back to texas to do the play what, what was the play you deserve to work from home <laughs> what? you deserve to work from home nice there you go I guess it was, uh, to do the musical, to do the musical. It was into the woods, but yeah. I mean, I really enjoyed it. Like, it wasn't. I wasn't even mad really to be doing it. I, I was young and I had a lot of energy, so mm -hmm. <laughs> I've done some. Uh, also, you know, I've done a lot of rough, it, it, and it feels different to do occasional drives for like I've done really long drives for comedy. I've done really yeah, long yeah, drives yeah. for other things. Like that feels a little different than. than That's not a long. commute though. That's a trip. Yeah, yeah. 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 The I did it three weekends in a row, so it like almost boarded on it got close to commute but like mm. yeah about an hour i i used to when i was still teaching in person my commute would be really bad because i would go be driving during rush hour it's brutal right oh, yeah, and then boring. when i was in college uh the town that i went to college in was so small that there wasn't really anywhere to work so i had to drive uh almost an hour outside of the town <laughs> to go work <laughs> at a red lobster in hot springs arkansas oh my god 
That's fantastic. Was there a, an actual hot springs there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Famous for it. Yeah. Better, better than uh, Riverside, California, which has no fucking river. And they don't tell you that until you get there. And they're like, there was a river. It dried up. I'm like, then change Long, the name of your goddamn ago. town. Old man Riverside. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, no, Hot Springs, Arkansas is pretty cool. There's actually, there's an episode of, of uh, King of the Hill. Really? Where they go to Hot Springs, Arkansas. That seems like something they'd do. I mean, why Mark not? Strickland takes Bobby up to Hot Springs, Arkansas. Oh, my God. Damn it, Bobby. <laughs> I know that's Hank, not, not Buck. No. <laughs> Doesn't matter. There's uh, somebody made a song about him talking about propane, and I'm like, it is the funniest shit i've ever did seen see, did y'all see the video the song going around of uh hank saying uh i don't know what i don't even know what a jpeg is oh yeah i just oh, want wow. a picture of a god dang hot dog i haven't seen that but i've seen the 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 dog. like do i look like i know what a jpeg is yeah. <laughs> that is a do a meme famous in time for sure. I'm I'm Googling that because I'm going to send it to you right now, sir. <laughs> One of my no. <laughs> That's, no uh, and by the way, yeah. John, I will message you with regards to that because we are yeah. also researching the same thing. Because we One, Cole got monetized, so we're trying to make merch. So yeah, the nice. the the funny the okay, so my one of the electives I'm teaching this semester is film. So uh, nice. I'm I'm just you know showing them movies and um, my favorite thing to do is if a film has a meme in it, I'm like, all right, there's a meme in it, get ready. And so right. like uh, I was showing him The Graduate and you have the hello darkness, my old friend, show up like six times. So just for everyone, it, here is the link in the comments for. A uh, hot dog JPEG song. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, in Thailand, I went to a Korean cafe, sat down, looked at the menu, walked out for a minute. They didn't sell coffee there. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is it's, funny. It's Listen, that's the... There's the nowhere Korean to get shenanigans. a cafe latte? What? I mean, it's one of those things that I honestly... Um, and it enrages me when people misrepresent things, and then they're like, oh, well, that's just how we do it here. And I'm like, no! You're a liar, sir. That is that is like if it's a pizza place, you better have good pizza. If you don't have good pizza, then it's a cardboard factory and go fuck yourself. I mean, is that so much to ask? I feel like that that's that's my biggest issue with plagiarism is people representing that they have the skills to do something and they have just stolen for somebody else. That's my issue. If you've tried and you're like, hey, I uh use this technique, oh, okay, fine. But if you just suck, work harder or steal from in a better way yet dingus no that's the the ai plagiarism kills me because yeah like you spend you spend a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of passion and a lot of sacrifice yeah. and a lot of failure to learn how to do a lot of the arts like that's the hardest yeah. part of the arts is they require failure there's no way to do a single art form without failure it's ingrained and that's what makes art human and then yeah. you take this AI that doesn't have to try. I almost feel like it's wrong to make art if you can't fear death. Like there's something about that that bugs me. It's like you can't 100%. you can't suffer if you can't feel. Why? What's the point of your art? Miyazaki, mm -hmm. um, I made I think the best point, uh, or may, maybe it was someone else. Miyazaki was talking about AI, but someone like they said, why should I be bothered to watch what you couldn't be bothered to make? Yeah. And I was like, that's yeah. it. That's the whole thing. Why should I be bothered to read something that somebody couldn't be bothered to yeah. write? Well, also, it's being mm -hmm. trained on the internet. Like, recently, Reddit went public, and now ChatGPT is being trained on all of the comments and stuff mm -hmm. from Reddit. So, yeah. eventually, it just becomes just, a snake yeah. eating its own tail. Of uh, like, and it's extremely racist. Yeah. Which is crazy, too, because, like, so much of Reddit is bots. Yeah. It's, like, intentional bots. Which, uh, at the same time, if you have to... Okay, if you do something and you need something else to make it seem like this is a good thing, how about... No, it's not a good thing, dummy. Just, like, wh what... On what... How does that logic train where you're like, ah, I will trick everyone because it's so good, the robots will fill it in and it'll work. You're like, no, mm -hmm. that's... Like, the idea that we now enlist AI to produce art 
instead of using AI to just provide us with all sorts of income so we don't have to fucking do this shit anymore. So we can make art, yeah. Like it, and, it, it's the, literally, it's like, hey, how much faster can we make Skynet happen? I'll tell you by literally destroying into everything. Yeah. Every time, like at the beginning of this year, I told my students, people, you might be wondering why you're even taking English in the first place and why it's important. And I'll t and I'll show you. There's a, a newspaper clipping that I always like to point to where it's a, a pitcher that can throw with both hands, debuted yeah. in Major League Baseball. And it was written with AI. Mm -hmm. He's cut out. All the times, God, he talked about it. AI. We were talking about AI. Oh, yeah. I do want to, like, while he's frozen, though, this, as an artist, I've suffered from this AI thing. Like, yeah. I'm so sorry to hear that because that, like, it sucks and it's so hard to watch. And I do really stand by the, like, I don't like, part of what I don't like about AI is, like, you can't fear death. And I feel like that's a driving force of mm -hmm. art is humans have this kind of inherent need to create. You see it at the dawn of civilization where we have this, inherent need to tell each other stories to sing songs and to draw yeah. things on the walls next to us it's yeah. almost this need and desire to connect it's the need and desire to connect with each other but also this almost desire to have staying power as a human being yeah. to have this mark art is eternal it's going to exist long beyond us hopefully you know unless the hope is your art doesn't get destroyed but like this idea that your art and your ideas can affect people outside of yourself and outside of your circle and these desires, they don't have that. And it takes the it takes the purpose out of art. Like, what is the purpose of pursuing any art if there's not a human aspect to it? It's it, it, yeah. it baffles me. <laughs> well, listen, art is the rep the outside representation of your inner soul. Like mm. that is the whole idea. It's like I am presenting myself uh and and to be judged by mm. others. Like that's that's why it's so difficult. And you're saying, like, one man's art is it like for me, I have a hard time appreciating paint. But sculpture and architecture, I'm like, wow, that's amazing, right? So, hey, I am Greek. This is what we would do. There we go. But it's just one of those things. Also, too, if you think that that was a great statement, uh, John, we also, the reason that Kayla is uh, so important and why we've had her back, because her previous statements have also been great, such as... Oh, fuck them kids. Also a fantastic statement. That's just, <laughs> okay, I actually, I can almost tell by the size of my second chin in that particular exactly how long ago that was uh, that was not my intention because i'll be honest with you there have been so many times when atlas said stuff and i'm just like oh, fuck them kids just yeah. immediately because there's like, nothing That's... you can do about that yeah. about that section there's nothing you can do it is it is just a, it's a great statement and it's important oh, also, listen i have a section but i look fucking hot in that though Let's go. Yes, hey, listen. It's, oh, man. That penis I drew in the abandoned truck stop bathroom stall is going to represent my soul. <laughs> I mean, technically, it will. Like, that well, is. I mean, you, know, you know, one of the first recorded or the first recorded joke ever, yeah. like the first one we have written down, it's a fart joke. It's a fart joke. Yeah. It's it's a Sumerian fart joke. And it doesn't translate at all. It doesn't translate to modern English at all. But it's so like, it was a hot really shit comment. <laughs> made a fart joke. I'm like, that's, that's it's a fart joke. And like it it like it doesn't translate into English very well, but it's like about a woman, a newlywed woman going like I, I think that like the idea of it is like once you've married a woman, she'll fart on your lap. <laughs> yeah. I mean the <laughs> Well, like, Otherwise, you got to pay for it. That's just how that works. Sorry, it's, uh, I, I, I was, was showing 10. my kids about a like thing about the history of propaganda, and like one of the earliest things you can point to is like Martin Luther being anti-pope, and he's got things where it's like the Pope is just spewing farts all the time, and it's like yeah, fart jokes have been around long before us, and they'll be around long after us. Sometimes yeah. the farts will stick around longer than we do. That's just it's <laughs> all sometimes. hail the poop pope. I know. <laughs> That's why his robes are always flowing. Oh, he yeah. wears robes for the same reason wizards do. Yeah, Asshole just... nine and three quarters. Yeah. <laughs> the Lord, the Lord takes his turds as they come and, yeah. and takes them up into the sky. Magical sorcery of the the, the Lord shit the, papal... the Lord taketh away. <laughs> the papal anus. It's, it's one of those things. It's uh I mean, I feel like once you become Pope, you get that superpower. Your, your poops just disappear. Yeah. It's God's blessing. There you go. You know, yeah. it's, it's fine. It's... Turns out that's a wiping. 
direction. <laughs> <laughs> the Pope gets a second uh, butt cheek just right down the middle, and it's across. There we go. A little high up, but still works. Fine. That's a Phillips head. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, you know, if he's a bad pope, if the 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 the, uh, the horizontal one is a little low, then it's an upside down cross. And you're like, oh, ah, bad no. pope. That's the Nazi pope. That's what he got. I feel. I feel like if we're talking about Phillips head butt cracks, I think I I, I think it's probably time to call it. <laughs> that's. I mean, <laughs> that's that's fair. that is fair. Um, Kayla, thank you so much for coming back on Generation Dan. Thank you for having me on. It's been super fun. Where can people find and follow you and all that good stuff? Uh, you know, I used to be uh, tweeting around on Twitter, but I'm not on that anymore, so that's gone. Good. Uh, but you can find me on Instagram and TikTok uh, at Kayla Cats and Comedy. So that's Kayla underscore Cats underscore and underscore a comedy. Um, also, if you just search Kayla Esmond, E S M O N D, you'll find me. Yeah. I pop up. I'm one of the only ones. Yeah. Also, too, uh, if you guys go to the Instagram for Generation Dan, which is linked in our uh, YouTube, uh, she is tagged in the Instagram post, which I do religiously for everybody. So if you want a previous guest, that's where their information is. Or if they don't have it there, uh, they may have been an AI pretending to be a guest. That's fine. It's oh, just- see, now oh, that's that, a thought twist. you get the opportunity to have an AI on. That'd be cool. It's going to be all fart jokes. I'm just. <laughs> well, if it's trained off of the internet and yeah. Reddit, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 Amadeus. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you can you can find us, like Dino was saying, at Generation Dan in all the places. Yeah. Um, find me at Atlas Novak uh, in all those places. I also run another podcast called Nexus at Night. That's about a trading card game called Vanguard. If you're not interested, I completely mm. understand. Also, also. Uh, me and Cole Clayton, good friend mm-hmm. of the show, previous uh, co-host on this show, started a new history podcast called Last Minute History, which mm-hmm. is like a terrible history report of me to Cole, and then he's making jokes about it. We just did our first episode last awesome. week. What? That sounds awesome. Yeah. Uh, it, it'll be every every other Monday on the Generation Dan RSS feed or on our YouTube channel. Yep. Um, what so, was your first episode about? Uh, Mesopotamia and the history of beer. Oh, that's um, very cool. That's very cool. You. Beer was wild is wildly influential in human like evolution. Oh, yeah. Everything. Yeah. It's Definitely. crazy. It's yeah. not a civilization until there's beer. Hey. Yeah, I, just, I, I literally the episode mess. that every civilization co- like discovers three things: fermentation, frying things, and swords. That's because so everybody funny. loves beer, donuts, and stabbing things. Well, yeah. and the fermentation thing is funny too, because that means that humans have been gross forever. Because the fermentation yeah. is the one and only thing that I bet I could have discovered. You know what I mean? I've left yeah. some stuff to rot. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And if you, if all that doesn't tickle your fancy, you could go to my channel where I'm building a bunch of Lego. This is the 1989 uh, Lego Batwing. Um, it's super huge and cool. Uh, it's actually a retired item, so you can't actually buy it anymore. Uh, oh, that's real cool. I'm, I've been building more and more Lego lately, and uh, my wife hates me for it, which I'm like, that's fine. She hated me anyway. That's not a, she can't get out. I'm not signing shit. So uh, in the end, if you want to watch that, I just talk shit while building Lego. So I'm doing that daily. You can check me out there as well, guys. That's super fun. So cool. it, it totally is. In the meantime, have a great night, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye, y'all. Thank you so much for having me.